March 14th. I'm sitting in our booth in the Pentagon. The Fox booth is on a hallway with all the other television networks. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby had come in to talk to me when a French journalist came running down the hall. She said, Jen, was your team hit in Kyiv? I called Jay Wallace, the president of news at Fox. And I just said, Jay, has our team been hurt? Was Benji hurt? And he said, do you know who was with him? I said, Pierre. The belief was that Benji had survived and nobody knew where he was. Nobody knew where Sasha and Pierre were. So I said, do you want me to help? And he said, yes. Now that was Fox's own Jennifer Griffin on colleague Benjamin Hall. Now in a forthcoming documentary entitled Sacrifice and Survival, a story from the front line. Well, you can see that on March the 19th, 9 p.m. right here on the Fox News Channel. Now here is more of my exclusive interview with Benjamin in this special edition of Hannity. When you had the aware awareness of how severe your injuries were and that car passed and then came back and you threw a rock at it. You describe in the book that you had to start pulling yourself up a slope so that the car would be able to see you at that point. Yeah. With all the injuries that you have, I, I, that to me is miraculous that you were able to do that with such severe injuries. Yeah. Um, elbows, arms slid along and uh, not once did I think, uh, I can't do this. Not once did I think the injuries are too bad for this. There was one thought in my mind, whatever it takes to get home, whatever it takes, nothing else matters. The pain, the struggles, it doesn't matter. You gotta do that every second, do whatever you have to. And I felt that throughout the whole recovery. Whenever things are really dark and hard and painful, whatever it takes, it doesn't matter. Put away the evil, put away the bad, you can do it you can do it and that's an incredible driving force if you hold something up in front of you that you want to do no matter what you can do it you can really do it you know we, we always try to put ourselves in the position how would i act if i went through something similar i i could tell you i don't think i could ever in any way match the mental toughness the strength the faith the fortitude the courage that you, you're describing here i think you could i think it's, most people can what amazed me most was where you can find and how you can find a new level. I never thought that was possible. I never thought I could go through that myself. I've seen people go through horrific things in wars, but every time I got to a point where I didn't think things were possible, I found another level of strength inside me. And I looked deep inside and I said, you gotta get through this. You hold on, you put aside that pain. And I know we've all got it. I believe that now. It's deep inside all of us. You find it, you fight for it, and it is inside us. We've got that. And so I think you could, I think anyone could, if you just believe in it and you keep doing it. Let's talk about Pierre. You had traveled to numerous war zones together. He was a close friend. You said in the book that you believe Pierre saved your life that day. Yeah. Why did you believe that? He was in the same car as you. He was in the same car. Pierre, I think to the end, got out of that car first. He cleared the way for me to get out. And whether you want to look at this in a bigger way, and look at God and religion, perhaps Pierre gave his life to save mine. Perhaps something happened there where this incredible person took that sacrifice. Meaning you think he opened the door for you, putting himself at risk? And when he kept saying Russian, the, meaning the drones were above you. He was still trying to save me when he said that. That was it. Oh. He was still trying to save my life. Right till the end, he had cut his femoral artery. He, he wasn't injured like I was. It was a small wound and he bled out. But um, the last thought for him was just continue saving us. Watch mm -hmm. out, it's the Russians. Pierre and I traveled the world together. We went to so many different conflict zones together and you develop a really close bond to people like that. You know, we'd slept in caves and trenches. We'd been everywhere together, we'd seen it. And, you know, we trusted each other implicitly with our lives. And so um, right there at that moment, uh, he was there for me again at the end. And I think every single day, I think back to that moment. When I'm struggling at all, I remember what it was like to sit there, to lie there with my injuries and that Pierre was there and I try to picture it as vividly as I can remember it. The feel of the ground, the clearness of the air, I remember it and I remember Pierre being there and I remind myself, 
that if you can't do everything from now on, if you can't do the, live the best life and do as good as you can, his life has gone to waste. You knew at that point, or at what point did you know that he was dead? Oh, I didn't know he was dead. I didn't, yeah. I didn't even know he was injured. He, he wasn't injured like I was. Mm -hmm. And it was only when I was on the way out and uh, I was on the Polish prime minister's train, and I, this was a couple of days later, and I had asked him a couple of times, I asked the people I was with, where's Pierre, where's Pierre? And Sasha was a journalist. Sasha was our fixer as well. Yeah. And uh, where's Pierre, where's Sasha? And the two Ukrainian drivers who were with us as well. Yeah. Where are they? And a couple of times that I got the answer, oh, he's, he's, back. He's, he's, back. he's back in Kyiv, he's back there. After a couple of times, I knew what that meant. Yeah. You know, there was no way I was going out and we weren't both going out if we were alive. And I remember saying, you Pierre, knew. I said, Pierre's dead, isn't he? You had been in Afghanistan together. You told a, a story in the book about uh, you were watching um, some Afghanis, you know, ride horses, and you asked to ride with Pierre, and you both rode together. And knowing this country was about to go through the hell of war, because that's what it is, but you had a, a moment of peace and serenity, sort of you and Pierre had this special bond you yeah. were describing. It was, and that was beautiful. It was in the mountains. We decided that, you know what, whatever we got to do, we're going to just forget it. Let's get on these horses. Let's ride up the hills. And there was this moment of real peace, beautiful, beautiful su sky and sun. And we just thought, we're just going to, the two of us, ride up together on these horses. Mm. And in some ways, that was that last little piece for the country as well. Afghanistan was about to fall as well. But perhaps it was the last piece for us too. And I think back to that moment too, you know, we had this bond and we talked about everything that meant so much to us, how we loved life and how we loved traveling and how we loved our families. So we talked about those together as we often did. And uh, I remember that part of Pierre too, the one who just loved the world, loved doing everything he could. Let me talk about, so you got in this car, they, they're literally dragging you with the, these most severe injuries. What do you remember from that point to the point where you woke up in the hospital? Very little. I remember bump, bumping around in the back of the car. Now, I was in and out at this point, in and out of yeah. consciousness. And uh, I just remember being dragged out and then getting an injection. What I found out the other day was that uh, they were about to take both my legs off. And one doctor said, don't do it yet. I'm coming in, specialist. Let me have a look. They had taken one, was already gone. They were about to take the other. The leg was already cold. He was about to go, wow. and he went in, and at the last minute, he, I don't know, he hooked it up, he got the blood supply going again, and he felt it as the leg started to get warm again. So it was minutes away from losing the whole of the left leg, and much of the muscle was taken. You know, the, the leg itself is still in you know, pretty bad shape at the moment, but it's there right now. And that mm. may come off at a later date because of some of the injuries that are still ongoing, but um, for the moment, I got it. I told you before we started this interview, uh, over the years, I've been to Walter Reed, I've been to Bethesda, I've met people with similar injuries as yours, soldiers that are fighting for our country. And I, every single time I would meet them, hear their story, I would leave with a real sense of embarrassment that I ever thought in my life that I have problems. Hmm. I don't have, these are problems. These are, these are challenges that are beyond really the comprehension of most people. This is the reality, sadly, of war and evil that does exist, I believe, in this world. Um, but that was always the feeling I had. And I watched other people that maybe had been through these moments and they would keep going back for the people that were starting their journey and helping them, saying, hey, look at me, I'm riding my bicycle now. Look at me, my life has changed. Um, I'm back with my kids, I'm back with my family. Uh, you've already started that process a little bit. I have, yeah. And I was blessed by the other people who had gone through these, who had similar injuries. And I was also blessed to be able to, to be treated in military medicine. And the Secretary of Defense, Austin, gave permission for me to enter um, first to Landstuhl, the, the base in Germany, and then San Antonio at Bamsey in Texas. And I was surrounded by people who had spent the last 20 years helping you know, other soldiers who were injured, like I was, rebuilding them, giving them legs, and helping them get through this mentally. And I'd sit down with them every week there, and we'd talk about the difficulties, what we'd gone through. And I'm very lucky that I came out of this with optimism, with hope that we've got to keep doing this every day and keep fighting. But I've spoken to many of them, mm. many of them, 
who have found it very difficult, who lose their identity, who lose their confidence, who can't quite see where their life goes next. And um, some of them, who, many of them, who tried to take their own lives before. And um, I think I got through this as well as I did because of the help from other people. And if I can give some of that back, if I can help some of them get through these moments too, then that's what I want to do. Talk to as many people as I can, get through it together. And this is a group effort. Everyone reached out to me. You reached out to me early on many times and gave me these words of wisdom. You encouraged me to keep going. Everyone, all our viewers, thousands of them reached out and people pray for you and send you things. Every single one of those gives you strength, reminds you that you're doing it for others, that your improvement is their improvement. And so what I'm saying at the moment is a thank you to everyone who helped me, that I did it because of them. And uh, again, if I can do my best to give that back to people, I'd like to. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.